Now, today, our workshop will be continued by Dr. Christian Ladja. Christian uh, received his PhD from Institute of National Polytechnic of the Toulouse many years ago. And he was working in the nuclear engineering and technology since 1979 in CIA. And since this year, summer, he, was, he retired from CIA, but still working as a consultant and scientific advisor for the CIA in Kadarash. Uh, Dr. Ladje will deliver first his first presentation, lecture on uh, liquid metal coolant for fast neutron reactors, properties and consequences. Christian, please. Yeah. It's not the right one? Okay. Um, Okay, thank you, uh, Vladimir. So uh, it's my pleasure to be here, and thank you to invite me again for this event. Uh, and so I appreciate to see a uh, lot of people here because the two last years were not so obvious. And uh, okay, so uh, it will be more technical. Okay, uh, you will see focus on sodium, even if we are, I will give some comments uh, on heavy liquid metals sometimes. And if you have questions, of course, I'm ready to answer. So, uh, so th what are the, the main what are the main uh, functions of uh, a coolant? The question is of, uh, often to, to discuss how we can select a coolant. A lot of people speak about neutronics, about materials, and so on. But the key point is the coolant, in fact, because you have uh, the, the structure of the reactor the safety assessment and so on is uh, strongly linked to the choice of these coolants and of course of its properties. So it's a key point. So the coolant must accomplish the following key task, extract heat from the core, high specific heat and thermal conductivity, ensure good extraction. It's clear that liquid metals are better maybe than gas, gas systems. You need a pressure in gas systems and uh, it's so less obvious. Uh, transfer it to an energy conversion system. It can be uh, to, uh, of course, to produce electricity, like uh, through a steam generator or exchanger plus turbine. You can have two uh, thermodynamical cycles, generally speaking. You can have a Rankine cycle with a steam or Brighton cycle with a gas or something which is mixed, I would say, supercritical. Uh, CO2, for example, and uh, to a system which, uh, or a system which directly uses the heat, okay? Uh, or, for example, there was a famous example of heavy oil extraction in the Canada, in uh, Athabasca, but uh, uh, you can have also thermochemical production of hydrogen thanks to uh, thermochemical uh, cycles, or, and desalination of seawater is also something, but not directly linked, it's more to use the back, uh, the low level energy, in fact, we have in the reactor. Ensure safety by providing the system with a high degree of thermal inertia. This is a key point also to have time to answer to a transient, for example. And in a fast reactor, neutron reactor, of course, the coolant must not slow the neutrons, okay, clearly. You need to have a strong energy, very energetic uh, neutrons activate under flux, producing compounds which create an unacceptable dosimetry, change the behavior of structural materials, interaction with uh, materials is very important, induce unacceptable safety conditions, induce unsurmountable operating problems, and uh, lead to waste which can be processed during operation or dismantling, okay? So here we can see, for example, that for example, we will see in sodium. Sodium has a good and very attractive properties for the, of course, with regards to the neutrons. Uh, activate under flux, we will see that it's uh, quite limited, okay? The dosimetry induced by the activation of sodium is rather, uh, limited, maybe compared to heavy liquid metals. And we can have, uh, for example, polonium 210 and so on. Change the behavior of structural materials. I would say that sodium is very uh, friendly with the materials, generally speaking. 
induce unacceptable safety conditions. In this case, uh, we, we have not a uh, huge problem, except the fact that we have to deal with uh, sodium, sodium fires. Okay, it's clear. And um, unsurmountable operating problems and led to waste which can be processed during operation on the mass dig. We have some feedback, for example, we know, for example, from Super Phoenix today, we have no more, we have no more sodium in the reactor. And for Phoenix, for example, we have a strategy. At the end, we have no more, no more sodium and just only uh, a concentration of activity in uh, some specific traps. And after that, we can release the, this effluent in the river, for example. Okay, uh, when you select uh, potential coolants, when you select potential coolants, of course, uh, there is some kind of rule. Uh, there was uh, uh, the idea to have a maximum melting point around 330. Why? I think the main reason is to accept the lead, okay? Uh, is to accept the lead, pure lead, because uh, we have a melting point of 327 uh, degrees. As you know, it's possible to reduce the melting point of heavy liquid metals by adding bismuth with the lead bismuth eutectic, where we have a melting temperature of about 125 okay, degrees Celsius. And of course, you have a lot of other ones. Uh, when the, in France, we have to decide, for example, if we have a, a another intermediate coolant. Instead, you know that in sodium fast reactors, we need to have uh, intermediate uh, coolant, okay? Mostly uh, up to now for large reactors. For smaller reactors, there are some discussions in order to improve the situation, but we can, uh, we investigate different possibilities, including, uh, well, and you have, when you select a coolant, for the primary, there are not so many choice, of course, and for the intermediate uh, circuits, we have maybe more possibilities, but you have to take into account the possibility uh, the occurrence of ingress of this secondary coolant in the primary coolant. And of course, you can have consequences. For example, we investigate the possibility to have lead bismuth in the secondary circuit, but what happens in case of ingress in the primary? You produce polonium 210, so you have alpha contamination and so on. So the benefit is not so high, <laughs> okay? In this case, even if the, we have uh, two equivalent pressure, dynamic pressures in both circuits, and, uh, okay, gallium also was investigated because gallium is, uh, has a very low melting point and very high boiling point, a large domain in the liquid phase. But uh, in terms of corrosion, you need uh, surely, for sure, to uh, have a, a, a coating on the circuits, maybe based on vanadium or something like that. So it's not so easy to use gallium and also the amount of gallium is uh, uh, is uh, limited. It's uh, generally a byproduct of the aluminium aluminium production. Uh, potassium also. It was used as a sodium potassium. We will see indium, uh, indium uh, uh, corrosion, lithium. Uh, you produce tritium, uh, selenium, uh, uh, complex tin corrosion, bismuth. I told you, uh, associated with uh, associated with uh, with lead and so on. Thallium is a poison. Cadmium is a high pollutant and so on. There are many reasons. At the end, we compared and we decided that we keep sodium, okay? Even if we have a lot of feedback, we wanted to have this overview. Okay, so we decide sodium. Just to recall that the sodium, you, you know that some, in some countries we speak about sodium, for others, we, they speak about natrium, okay? In Germany, in Russia, uh, natrium. So the name of... of Ah, natrium, exactly, <laughs> in US also. So there is an uh, etymology of, uh, you know, that uh, the name of uh, natrium comes from the, uh, they come from the Egypt, probably. Okay, it's an uh, Arabian word, uh, natron, and coming at the very beginning. There is a place where there is uh, uh, west of Cairo in Egypt. Okay, we have uh, Wadi al Natron, which is the place where there are a lot of uh, sodium carbonate. In fact, it was used for many, many things, and particularly the mummy's preservation, it's a very important thing, and uh, some colors, some antiseptics, so it was used 
but not as a effectively liquid metal. It's, you don't find in the nature liquid metal. Uh, yes, so introduction to sodium. Okay, sodium is in the alkali metal family. The name from, comes from Arabic, alkali, uh, meaning uh, hash is coming from the sea. Uh, I don't come back, but you know the properties and one of the pro some difficulties we face with sodium is the fact that it's in this column. So, as you know, it's not possible to move one element from one column to the other one. So, uh, we have to deal with this uh, position, okay? So, you have uh, uh, an electron on the external uh, surface, uh, on the external layer, okay? And so, you, give, you have uh, very high reducing properties. It can be uh, some kind of drawbacks, but we will see also there are some advantages to be here. Okay, production. Uh, in Europe, in France, we have uh, a mine in Varangeville, in the near Nancy, in the east, east part of France. And we have a company producing a large amount of sodium in the Meto Specio, which is located in Moutier. Uh, this uh, company provides the sodium for uh, Monju, uh, provides the sodium for PFBR in India, for BN800 in Russia, and of course for French reactors also. Uh, like Rhapsody, Phoenix, and Super Phoenix. So it's a very old uh, factory. It started by hand of the 19th century, okay? So it's uh, in the Alps because the electricity, the cost of electricity was low and was effectively produced by the water, water dumps. Okay, so you know that sodium is not used uh, only for nuclear and particularly for many other applications because, because the uh, sodium is largely used in, in industry, in chemistry, in oil, uh, oil uh, companies, for example, to produce tyrene and so on. Uh, and one of the most important applications is, uh, as you know, production of indigo, indigo, the blue color, uh, for genes and so on, and the uh, uh, large benefits of sodium come from the indigo production. Okay. Uh, so here you have, uh, you know that the sodium is used for batteries, sodium sulfur batteries, and currently there are some efforts, and particularly through a European project called the Saltis, to use the sodium for the batteries to replace the lithium, because the lithium, as you know, it's not so. Uh, we, we have less uh, lithium than sodium, <laughs> comparatively. We have a lot of sodium in front of, in, in the sea. Huh? Okay, so uh, batteries, and particularly in Japan, it was developed uh, for domestic, domestic batteries, not for cars and so on, for domestic, in order to, to provide electricity in some uh, buildings. Uh, Dynamo experiment, you know that there are some studies uh, dedicated to uh, uh, to understand the magnetic field of the Earth, okay? You know that the magnetic field, North Pole, North Pole and South Pole, are linked to the movement of the magma, and to have a better understanding of this phenomena, uh, facilities, uh, there are some facilities using, using uh, sodium, particularly linked to have two impellers rotating uh, in opposition phase, and you create a special movement, and you create uh, electric uh, magnetic field, through what we call dynamo effect. This dynamo was uh, firstly demonstrated for the first time in Institute of Physics of uh, University of Latvia in Riga. Uh, but there are other facilities, one in Kadarash, for example, in France. Uh, in Germany, there is a big project, Dresden. You have also uh, experiments in, uh, in Russia, in Perm, uh, laboratories, and uh, in Madison, also in the US. So many studies fundamental studies. Uh, in metallurgy, it's used to purify also some elements, okay. Uh, uh, solar applications, there are some uh, specific uh, thermoelectrical converters, but you have also now a, a new trend to use the sodium in a solar, uh, solar concentration plants, particularly there are some projects in Australia or in, uh, in Sweden also, and so on. So it means that sodium has uh, advantages, and even if it's reactive, 
we can have a lot of uh, uses. Uh, there are also some, uh, just to recall, uh, I recall here that we can have also uh, binary uh, uh, coulombs, okay, like sodium potassium. There was uh, one circuit in um, EBR1, which was uh, NAC. And you have also uh, in, uh, in Scotland, in Scotland, uh, DFR reactor, which was cooled by uh, sodium potassium alloy. The advantage is that uh, it's liquid at ambient temperature. But sometimes it's not an advantage. For Rhapsody, I have found some, uh, some uh, records of the discussions we had a few more than 60 years ago. And uh, NAC was considered, but it was considered better to have the possibility to freeze, in some case, circumstances, the sodium, okay? Because uh, you, you, you avoid to have always the liquid metal phase. Uh, Let bismuth, okay, you know, it was uh, particularly developed, well, you know the story of uh, submarines in, in uh, Soviet Union, but also it was uh, uh, at, the ve at the beginning focused, of course, for ADS, but particularly for the target. Hmm? For the target called, uh, for example, Megapi, I was uh, lucky because I was uh, during, uh, involved in this project um, and at the end as a director of this project. So, uh, Let Bismuth is also interesting, but there are some drawbacks, okay? Uh, particularly the activation, uh, activation production of uh, polonium, but not only. Uh, lead lithium is for uh, fusion, as you know, to produce tritium in the tritium blankets. And uh, uh, lead uh, magnesium was uh, investigated by Korean, by Korea, uh, but not, not deeply, in fact. Huh? But the problem of this is that when you have uh, uh, lithium or magnesium, you know that there is a difference of potential of oxidation. So it means that if you have an air ingress in these systems, uh, you, you have a modification of the composition, okay? And it's, uh, you need to extract oxides and to reintroduce elements in order to keep, to keep the right composition. So it's not so easy in case of uh, uh, air ingress. And when you have handling operations and so on, you know that sometimes you can have, you can have pollution. Okay, sodium properties, we have no specific toxicity. Even if we have uh, uh, irritation and local corrosivity, so it means that, uh, 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 of course, we have to take uh, to take care with that. But we have not specific toxicity like with lead. Okay, with lead, we, you know that we have specific toxicity. We have a very large availability. Huh? Okay, yeah. the, the, the sodium is uh, everywhere, e even in your food. Okay. Uh, here you have the, the values and uh, no problem. The output every year, well, it depends. You, you have different sources, but a large use of sodium, so no problem to, to use this sodium. Uh, sodium properties, uh, low meeting point, okay, 97.8. Uh, uh, it means uh, it's uh, rather low. Yeah, some. Uh, it's an it's interesting uh, value. We will see why after. So by we limit the risk of freezing in heat exchangers compared to some other coolants, particularly for the decay removal systems. We need to have a rather low uh, melting point. A uh, large range of temperature in liquid phase, okay, is less than uh, lead, of course. You know that lead is uh, higher. Nevertheless, we consider that uh, uh, before to reach the melting point of the, the boiling point of the lead, uh, you can have uh, issues on the, on the vessel, okay? And uh, so it uh, means that uh, maybe the main point um, is uh, effectively uh, to, to, to have enough range between the steady state operation on the hot plenum and the boiling point. This is the reason why it's important also to develop some studies on the boiling, on the sodium boiling, uh, in order to have a good understanding of the conditions. For that, there were some particularly deep discussions about common program with, uh, with IPP in, uh, in Russia. A low density and low viscosity. Uh, what is interesting is that to, to note that, I don't, to, I don't go too much in detail, but uh, we have a very similar properties between uh, some sodium and the water. 
So the consequence we will see is that we can uh, carry out some experimental studies with water. When it is pure uh, hydrodynamic studies, we can have mock-ups with water. So it's a quite interesting uh, fact uh, for experiments. Here you can see this is a mock-up of uh, uh, a street where we have a, a water circulation and by coloring the water you have a, a very interesting results about the understanding of the flow of the flows inside the primary vessel. High sound velocity in sodium. Okay, so it's a, a very a small influence of the temperature on the uh, velocity. So it means that you can have, a, we will have a lot of technologies and methodologies to inspect the systems with uh, ultrasonic uh, technologies. And so it's a quite uh, interesting property also. Uh, very high thermal conductivity, of course, of course, is liquid metal. Uh, attractive heat capacity and excellent electrical conductivity. So, uh, like other liquid metals, uh, we can use electromagnetic pumps, uh, flow meters, and so on. So, there is a well demonstrated technology uh, with the sodium, not only with sodium, with lithium also, or heavy liquid metals, but uh, with sodium since a very long time. And also, leak detection systems. Uh, uh, I will come back on this point. Low va saturation vapor pressure, which is interesting, maybe higher than the lead, but, uh, but not so significant. So we, are, we, we have no significant deposits of sodium, uh, vapor sodium and condensation on the slab, of the upper slab of the reactor. Uh, sodium leak detection, yes, on this point, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, on this topic, we had some uh, studies related to the development of reliable leak detection systems. In the past, we have mostly uh, technology which is well known and used in many countries. We have a pipe where we have, uh, sorry, I come back, uh, yeah. Uh, we have uh, some uh, electrical wires. We are electrically insulated, and in case of leak, you can have a you establish a contact between the, the, so the sodium and the pipe and the wire, and if you have, a, so you have a shortcut, okay? And so in this case, you can detect the variation of tension, and uh, it's a warning to, uh, saying that you have a, a sodium leak. Uh, but the sodium, you can have an interaction between the the insulating material, and you produce some um, oxides and the mixture that induce uh, deep corrosion. Deep corrosion. So you need to detect very soon. And so it was not so comfortable for, for the detection, even if we don't face uh, uh, significant uh, problems. But it's, uh, it's important to know this fact. And uh, so we have developed, you know, for our street, uh, innovative leak detection systems. It's a multi-layer, multi-layer uh, system where you have sodium. The you have here the uh, you have here the the, the pipe and uh, several layers. Okay, which uh, favor the transfer of the liquid sodium towards the detection system. And here the detection system is uh, is not. Uh, a wire is a really a layer, electrically conductive layer around the, around the pipe. So it was test and uh, we demonstrated the possibility of detection of very small leaks around one centimeter cu cubic centimeters per minute within a few minutes or few tenths of minutes depending on the conditions. Okay, but it was really very efficient. Uh, about, uh, so, Coming to the materials, we have a very good compatibility with the steels. Uh, no significant liquid metal embrightenment. This is, you know that this is a weak point of the heavy liquid metals, okay? And, um, and a very low corrosion kinetics, okay? It's clear that uh, uh, we can notice that all the reactors in operation during a long period, like Phoenix or BN600, for example, they didn't face uh, high corrosion kinetics, 
and uh, consequence, we don't produce too much uh, particles. Okay, so it's important also this fact. Uh, we have a limited mass transfer and, conse and consequently very limited effect on heat transfers to heat exchangers. We have uh, effectively deposits on the cold part of the primary circuit, but it's not so much. It's not so much. Um, very limited amount of particles. In sodium, we have ma mostly what we call chromite. Okay. And in some circumstances, we have ternary oxides, ion ternary oxides. We can perturbate the, some measurements, but it's uh, quite uh, limited, uh, very uh, not often event we can fa face during the operation. A very important pro property also is that the solubilities, we will come back in more detail, o oxygen and hydrogen in sodium are very low uh, near the melting point. So it means that it's uh, quite easy, we will see that it's quite easy to eliminate uh, oxygen and hydrogen. Uh, uh, hydrogen is coming, we will see, from different sources, but particularly also from the moisture, okay, uh, in, in the air. So we have uh, very low solubility. It means that uh, we have a system, by cooling the sodium, we are able to trap the most important amount of impurities. This is not the case, for example, for lithium. For lithium, uh, lithium reacts also with uh, nitrogen, you know. It's not the case with uh, sodium. And um, also uh, with uh, lead and lead business, uh, we have, uh, it's uh, different. We have low solubilities, but uh, the strategy is more complex for the purification. We will can discuss tomorrow at this point. And um, what is important is here, the lowest uh, the oxygen content is, the best, okay? It's not like in heavy liquid metals where, where we have to work in a narrow range of concentration in order to protect the, protect the surface due to the potential liquid metal embrightenment and corrosion. You have to maintain a layer of oxide, but you have also to avoid precipitation of uh, lead, of uh, lead oxide. Uh, very good wetting, so it's very important property also. Why? Because uh, sodium is a reducing uh, coolant. So it means that if you have oxide, you are able to eliminate the oxide. So in this, uh, you know that the wetting, the property of wetting, you know what is wetting, okay? This is the uh, contact, uh, contact between, uh, the contact between the, the you have a, a structural material here, and if you have a poor wetting, you have something like that, a droplet of sodium. If you have a good wetting, okay, you, have a, you are more in this situation, okay? And the angle of, the, the angle of wetting is uh, quite, uh, is uh, null, okay? So in this case, you have a perfect contact. And you can notice that in this case, the, the contact is very good and it's very, it's an important property for the inspection, for example, when you have ultrasonic waves, uh, the the return of the uh, ultra US US uh, wave, it's uh, much more uh, efficient in terms of industry. Uh, here, so thanks to uh, sorry, thanks to uh, uh, different sensors, you can produce. Uh, viewing under sodium viewing. Here you have just an example. It's uh, below, and uh, it was uh, observed between. Uh, we have superposed the metallic, the picture, and the signal of the in service inspection uh, by ultrasonic technology. Okay. Here, sodium properties. Okay. The sodium, just to recall, your sodium is uh, 23. Okay. Um, 11. 11 uh, protons and 12 neutrons, but you can have, you produce by uh, s several nuclear reactions. Uh, sodium 24, 15 hours, half-life, 15 hours, so it means it's uh, enough to uh, induce some constraints for the operation. But when you want to repair, after let's say three days, uh, you have uh, acceptable dosimetry to uh, have intervention. This uh, sodium 22, it's uh, 2.6 years, so it has to be 
particularly, it's not a lot uh, a large contribution for operation, but for decommissioning, you have to take into account. And so often, when you have a, a lot of files to prepare for the public inquiry, for the decommissioning, and so on, during this time, the, the dosimetry uh, uh, decreases strongly. And after that, you have a neon 23 fluor, the, the duration is not good, okay? Uh, another point, when you buy the sodium, you have to take care about the composition of in terms of impurities. So when we discuss with a company uh, selling the sodium, Metal Specio, for example, we have to ask him in uh, the specifications, uh, strict specifications in terms of PPM, okay? So there are the, for different reasons, you can see here, we have a, a necessity to reduce the composition. Of course, the lithium, for example, for tritium, but not only, uh, some other for clogging, risk of precipitation, particularly the calcium, for example, uh, in terms of corrosion, the sulfur, uh, you can, uh, and, for example, potassium. Potassium, uh, the gas blanket activity, for example, uh, 30 years ago, they asked for less than 300 ppm, okay, in the sodium. Now, we know that uh, Metospecio is able to produce a sodium with a much lower content in uh, potassium. Why uh, potassium is a problem? You produce argon-41 in the cover gas. So it's necessary to reduce this, uh, this uh, uh, the content of titanium. Okay, here just an illustration of what we have in terms of uh, pollution. It's a summary, I would say. Uh, here you can see uh, is something like uh, a primary vessel, but it can be uh, in other circuit also. You have a free level of sodium here, okay? Free level of sodium. And uh, above that, you have uh, argon, okay? Uh, inert gas. There were some uh, operations with helium, but uh, it, it is uh, argon has been, uh, of course, is selected everywhere for different reasons. First, is a poor conducting gas. So it's uh, an advantage also because first we limit the convection and also you limit the transfer of heat from the sodium bulk towards the, towards the, the slab above. Yeah. And um, uh, we have uh, also when you introduce uh, metallic elements here, uh, of course, you know that on a metallic element, you have always oxide on the surface. And so you pollute, you pollute the the, the sodium, even if you take a lot of uh, uh, care. For example, for superphenix, just a value too important because you know that superphenix was the largest, the biggest reactor which was built in the past, 1,200 uh, megawatts, okay? We had in this reactor in the primary circuit 3,300 tons of sodium in the primary circuit and uh, we have a, a surface, a total available surf metallic surface in contact with sodium of 48,000 square meter, more or less, okay? So it's not negligible. So even if you have a small pollution multiplied by the surface, it's not, at the end, it's not a negligible pollution, okay? Several uh, tens of kilograms. So, when, but thanks to the properties of sodium, you have a uh, decomposition of the oxide on the su surface because sodium is a reducing element and you have a transfer in the, in the sodium and, so, and the oxygen and hydrogen thanks to the low solubility, as I told you, uh, at near the melting point. It's easy, I would say, easy to purify and to maintain a high level of quality of the sodium. We operate, all the reactors are more or less operated uh, with a concentration of oxygen lower than 3 ppm, okay? So there are some uh, variation, but generally these reactors are operated with very low, very low oxygen content. Uh, corrosion, corrosion in sodium. Uh, uh, we have uh, here, uh, the, mm, there was a lot of studies in the sodium, but uh, now most of the studies have been uh, done, and uh, even if there are some new corrosion studies with uh, uh, new, uh, new uh, metals, for example, ODS, what we call ODS, uh, there are some uh, less, let's say that we have uh, 
well, a good understanding of the corrosion phenomena. Uh, generally, it's, uh, we have, uh, the corrosion is a homogeneous phenomena, what we call generalized corrosion on the surface. This is one of the corrosion. Uh, and uh, of the main parameters are, of course, oxygen content, but you have the dissolution, in fact, mainly dissolution of uh, uh, elements, um, uh, chromium, nickel, and um, nickel, chromium, and, uh, and iron. But the corrosion with regard nickel is uh, very low compared to, compared to heavy liquid metals. This is a key point for heavy liquid metals, where the nickel dissolution due to the high solubility of nickel in heavy liquid metals. Uh, so we release the corrosion products, and uh, the main point you have to remember is that in sodium fast reactor, it's not really a, a problem, an issue with the thickness of the clad, okay, for the fuel assembly. You know that the fuel assemblies, they are pins with the, with the cladding. It's uh, more a question of uh, contamination transfer, activated corrosion products, from the core, which is the hottest part of the reactor, towards uh, the coldest part. Uh, you have a transfer and you have deposition. And if you have to have a maintenance operation, a repair or something, you need to clean up the sodium and decontaminate. We will see that later. Okay, solubilities. Okay, I told, uh, we already I spoke about that. You can see here, we have uh, well-established uh, laws. There are different laws, huh? okay? We discussed these points, particularly within the frame of AEA working group, uh, in order to produce, uh, to produce a, a handbook on the sodium properties, the physical and uh, chemical properties, and also uh, on the correlations. It's just uh, thermal correlation, and pressure drop correlations, and so on, uh, through a CRP called the NAPRO. And uh, I think that the documents will be issued uh, very soon. If I so here you have, uh, for example, our reference in, uh, in, in CA, uh, Whittingham for hydrogen and northern solubility law for, for oxygen. Um, Coltrap principle, we will go in detail tomorrow. Uh, this is a, a, a system where you, we circulate the sodium. We promote the, we have to cool the sodium. We have some support, but not only, we will see in more details. And you trap sodium oxide and sodium hydride. So we have developed some studies uh, in, uh, uh, yes, sorry. Uh, some studies where we have established the kinetics for both oxygen and hydrogen separated modeling. And uh, thanks to the good knowledge of the properties uh, uh, of the kinetics, we have developed uh, new systems for, for, uh, for sodium cooled, uh, cooled, so for sodium cooled fast reactors. I will detail that uh, tomorrow, okay. Uh, activated corrosion products in sodium. So as I told you, we have a transfer from the hot part in the core towards the coldest part. So we have developed uh, tools to simulate the transfer, the mass transfer of activated corrosion products. And uh, we are not alone. Huh? We are, there are efforts uh, done in, uh, in several countries, and particularly, for example, in Japan with the Psyche code. And uh, we have also developments in, uh, in India with the Solpreg, with, uh, in Russia also. And so there are different codes. and. Uh, uh, the idea also to do some benchmarking uh, activities in order to compare because the basis, uh, scientific basis are sometimes different. Okay, for example, Russian colleagues focus more on the particulate. Yeah. And, um, but, uh, okay. So we have developed in France a code called the Oscar, Oscar Sodium because we have different versions of this code, not only for liquid metal systems, but also for fusion, for tritium blankets, uh, for uh, pressurized water reactors. So in fact, uh, we adapt, of course, uh, with the kinetics and so on. It's uh, adapted for many applications. Uh, here you can see, here we did some measurements, just uh, uh, interest in sodium is that, as you know, we have a lot of operational feedback in uh, several countries. And uh, we used the data we obtained 
uh, on a still intermediated exchanger. There is a, uh, an exchanger between the primary circuit and the intermediate circuit. And uh, we, this exchanger, so it's a sodium sodium exchanger, and um, it's clear that um, we have a distribution, we have measured by what we call gamma scanning, okay, measurement of gamma all along the system. Uh, we have the possibility to establish the distribution of uh, radionuclides on the surface. And we had the very accurate measurements. And uh, we, okay, so we have a modeling of these measurements. And we did uh, calculations with our code OSCAR, OSCAR sodium. And uh, we have uh, found that we, we had a good, we have a very good, uh, uh, modeling of this phenomena. Okay, so our code is now used to establish some predictions of uh, distribution of uh, radio elements on these uh, cold surfaces. You have, uh, if you want, sometimes I indicate some references for if you want to go in more details. Okay, so uh, particularly for three main uh, radio contaminants, one of them is the manganese 54. And the second one is cobalt-60, and also, in a less extent, cobalt-58. So what we did, uh, here you have a profile of contamination before cleaning. What we call cleaning, we will see later. Uh, we have to, okay, to eliminate the uh, layer of uh, sodium on the surface. And it's easy, I would say, thanks to the reactivity of sodium with the steel. Okay, so cleaning, cleaning the surface for maintenance, cleaning the surface for uh, component for, of sodium fast reactor, it's easy and well mastered. Okay, because of the reactivity of the sodium. We will come back on this point after cleaning, and after decontamination. For decontamination, we generally use. Uh, we will see that, I think, just after. We will see, we will use acidic, acidic bath to clean up the residual uh, deposits of activated corrosion products. It's uh, generally uh, uh, um, uh, sulf uh, sulfuric, uh, sulfuric acid, of course, uh, uh, mixed. Uh, we will see that tomorrow when we will speak about materials. But uh, it's uh, sulfuric acid diluted sulfuric acid. Uh, sodium properties, very large reactivity with water, okay? And uh, so, as you know, we have an interaction in steam generator units. Uh, it's uh, very important because we can inject, in ca you can inject uh, water in the, in the sodium. We'll come back on this point. This is uh, clearly a point we have to avoid or to detect as soon as possible. We will discuss this point later on. And, uh, but for cleaning pits, okay, as I told you, the cleaning, when you want to clean up a, compo a component, it's uh, easy, I would say. It's easy and it's well mastered. But we have an important chemical reactivity with air, which can induce sodium fire. Okay, it's clear. It's uh, an event we have to face, potential event we have to face. And this event can be avoided by inertization, generally, or uh, by uh, extinguishing locally, automatically, or with a fire brigade here, uh, they, 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 uh, extinguishing uh, a sodium fire. A particular peculiarity why the, the fire main is uh, close to the fire is because it's not like a hydrocarbon uh, fire. You don't have, uh, you have not uh, vapors and uh, heating in all the room. Uh, in our sodium school in Kadarash, we have a sodium school, okay, where we train uh, not only the operators, but also the researchers. And uh, we enter in a room where we have a sodium fire with, of course, with the gloves, glasses, and so on, and uh, all the protections. But uh, everybody is surprised by the fact that two surprises. First, the effect of aerosols, because you lose your repairs, but, but you can be close to the fire also without uh, specific uh, uh, risk. Yeah. 
So we used uh, the powder which can be used for extinguishing is a sodium plus lithium carbonate, a sodium carbonate, lithium carbonate and graphite. Graphite is for the fluidization to give more fluidity to the, to the powder. And it's well master technology. Uh, about saturation vapor pressure, okay. Uh, we have a few a limited amount of aerosols, so it's a very important point. Uh, so, as I told you, we have a very low flames in case of ignition. Uh, we, uh, temperature is above, let's say, 140 degrees Celsius. This is the reason why uh, the producer of sodium is able to uh, drain the sodium, liquid sodium, at in air, okay, in air at low temperature for, to prepare the ingots, okay. So you don't have immediately a fire, except if you have, a, uh, if the sodium is spread in sm small droplets, because you have a lot of active interaction between the droplets and the and the air, okay, and the oxygen in the air, okay. Uh, consequence of very few aerosols, it's not possible to eliminate a sodium layer by, I would say, distillation under vacuum. You have not enough uh, power to uh, uh, extract the, 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 the sodium. It's not like with water, it's quite different. Okay, uh, so we, uh, we have a lot of studies dedicated to sodium fire because it's, I, I, we agree that it is a weak point of sodium. So here you have a uh, sodium in puddle, temperature around 140s, dispersed sodium, and uh, sodium fires. Okay, you have here a description of the main uh, reaction. You produce sodium oxide and sodium uh, peroxide. Okay, this is uh, just uh, uh, similar to the previous uh, slide. Okay, for the water, for the water, sodium plus water produce sodium hydroxide, hydrogen, and the heat. Okay. Uh, but we have uh, different uh, circumstances to have a sodium water reaction. Sometimes we don't want to have this sodium interaction. It's particularly the case for the sodium water, uh, sodium water interaction in steam generators. And, uh, uh, but sometimes for the, to the destruction of sodium, uh, for the destruction of sodium, uh, we, we use a process we have developed, NOAA, NOAA process, it looks like uh, an average, okay? Uh, but you have also uh, here four, four examples. One is a cleaning pit, I told you. You can introduce in a cleaning pit a component and with a steam or spray, we clean up our, uh, in safe conditions our, our components. Uh, you have the steam generator here, uh, you can see uh, here on this in the middle, you can see uh, three steps. If you have a, a pipe with a steam inside, you inject in the sodium, you have of course production of heat and uh, soda, and so you can impinge the neighboring pipe. And so you can have a propagation of sodium water in a, in a bundle, in the steam generator, a bundle of pipes. And so it's clearly an event we want to avoid. This event, uh, this event occurred in a, in the PFR reactor in uh, Scotland, okay? So it's not just only a prediction, it happened, okay? So we want to avoid that, and for that, we detect as soon as possible the interaction between sodium, uh, between the sodium and the water, thanks to the production of hydrogen, which is dissolved in the sodium, and we have specific instrumentation to detect a very small variation of oxygen content. It, uh, uh, okay, and the last is the NOAA process. So we use this process. We inject uh, sodium in the water. Okay, we destroy 2.5 tons per day, about. Okay, and uh, we apply that for uh, Rhapsody, uh, Super Phoenix, uh, PFR in the UK. So it's a process well demonstrated and uh, very efficient. So it means that you can have a, a large destruction of sodium by direct interaction between sodium and water without any consequence uh, and safety. You can sleep close to the, you can sleep close to the machine without noise, okay? Ex the main reason is that the fact that in steady state operation, you don't inject sodium inside the water, 
uh, except during the first, uh, uh, the first uh, period where you reach the steady state value in terms of composition. So you inject sodium, you have a pump, uh, a pump, specific pump, dispersion of uh, sodium here inside uh, the water. Just in front of, we have injection of water, uh, mixing and fast dispersion of sodium and uh, ext extraction of sodium hydroxide here, injection of water here, because uh, to, to respect the mass balance, overall mass balance, extraction of the gas, particularly hydrogen, condensing, and uh, measuring tritium and so on and so on. And, uh, uh, okay, uh, after two slides, and I'll finish for this first part. Uh, for the uh, dismantling, uh, uh, we have demonstrated uh, that it's possible to dismantle a, a fast reactor cooled by sodium. Okay, clearly, and particularly as I told you uh, on Super Phoenix now, there is no more sodium anywhere. Okay, everything has been uh, processed and it's just a conventional dismantling of uh, structural material. So, uh, what are the main process for decommissioning is that uh, we have, uh, as I told you, the sodium process destroyed the huge amount of sodium we can have in the primary and uh, ancillary secondary systems. But we have also, uh, we use the cleaning pits to clean up the uh, structural material. We have also, uh, we develop also sometimes we have a sodium potassium in some parts of the reactor. Um, we have a, a way to, to process that. And, part, and we have, a, with the residual amount of uh, sodium, we have the possibility to, uh, we carbonate. So we convert sodium into carbonate in order to be able to cut after that the structures in order to avoid any release of liquid metal, which uh, liquid sodium, which could be uh, heated by the mechanical uh, stresses on the, on the liquid metal. So uh, typically, uh, for example, this is a schedule we follow for the for the super phoenix. You have to know that we started to destroy, I would say, the sodium around 2010 in less than uh, in less than eight years. Okay, less than ten years, all the sodium was uh, eliminated in super phoenix. Huh? And uh, another process we have developed for the decommissioning, which is linked again to the water, thanks to the reactivity of sodium with water. Uh, we have developed ELA process, is enceinte de lavage and actif. This is a process where we have the possibility to cut the, the, the coal trap. Uh, for example, a system which is, the, for example, for the purification, at the end you, you have uh, these, uh, these systems to, to process. And uh, we have developed this system, and uh, okay, we have uh, modeled, uh, modeled the, um, the, different, uh, the different operations. And uh, one question, for example, was to know the distribution of tritium, because in these systems we have a tritium also, a small amount of tritium. It's not uh, like in a fusion, okay, clearly. Just for information, for Super Phoenix, estimation of the tritium source was two grams of tritium per year, okay? But it's enough to, to have to take into account in terms of uh, environmental uh, uh, imp uh, consequences, okay? So we have to trap this tritium. And for that, we made some studies modeling of this uh, HELA process where you have the residual sodium, uh, you, you have a layer of sodium hydroxide, and then you, have, uh, you drop the sodium uh, hydroxide, and uh, we study the different exchange uh, of uh, between uh, hydrogen, tritiated hydrogen, water, and so on, in order to have a, a good view of the distribution of tritium in all the in all the system. Okay, sorry. Okay, this is the result of the, of the phenomenology. We can stop here. Uh, next will be uh, tomorrow. Ah, yeah, maybe I finish with this one, sorry. Uh, an additional one to finish with the uh, sodium water interaction. So here you have the equation of uh, where we have the, 
okay, sodium water interaction. The problem is effectively we have, uh, when we have a sodium fast reactor equipped with a Rankine cycle, it means with the steam generators, we have to, okay, here you can see the, the, the reactor itself, the intermediate circuit, and here the energy, what we call energy conversion system. Here you have the steam generator here, and um, when, you, uh, uh, when you have this injection of steam inside the sodium, okay, we have a, you, you, have an, you can have an evolution of the leak, okay, from a no leak to a micro leak, small leak, and evolution, okay? So, um, effectively, we have to, to address uh, this uh, point. So, you have a lot of uh, models in order to describe the interaction, particularly when you have injection of steam in uh, sodium bulk. And uh, you, we have uh, what we call, we study and we model the impact on the neighboring pipe. This phenomenon is called wastage, okay? And we, we model that in order to develop strategies and uh, consequence on the detection times uh, mitigation of this event by draining the sodium and water, uh, water first and sodium after, uh, and so on, to, uh, to have a protection of the investment, okay? You don't want to lose the steam generator, particularly if you have, a, if you have a modular steam generators, like in some countries, like in uh, India or Russia, for example, but uh, in Super Phoenix and Astrid, we have uh, we did the choice to have only one single steam generator for each loop, it's like an intermediate loop. So it's clear that it is important to have a good understanding of this phenomena. Okay. Yeah, I will come back on this point later. I stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lodge. We have time for only for one question, which I will ask. Huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, and, but you have time during the lunch, please ask Christian the question. Okay, uh, can you apply this technology for, for elimination of sodium potassium alloy, which is, I know that in the breast of the BN350 in Kazakhstan, is, which is still under decommissioning in some of the secondary circles, they have sodium potassium okay. alloy remaining. Could you apply, or what are the features for if you Sodium potassium? Yeah, if you do it for use, the sodium we can, potassium. We can use, uh, we can use NOAA process. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, NOAA process is, uh, is possible to, to use this process, continuous process to convert uh, sodium potassium alloy into a mixture of uh, sodium and potassium hydroxide. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah? Very quick question and quick answer, please. Yeah, thank you very much. So I want to come back with uh, your forward, talking about uh, how you manage the waste, because you said that uh, the waste didn't contain sodium, just uh, some activities, specific activities. Mm -hmm. And uh, you disperse the waste in a rival. So did you prevent, because uh, yes. did you prevent some uh, environmental contamination? And mm -hmm. how did you manage it? Uh, we will, uh, I will uh, speak about that uh, tomorrow afternoon, but uh, uh, yes, we have the possibility to eliminate, for example, cesium. Cesium, uh, yeah. you will see that uh, there is a continuous process to uh, uh, trap the cesium in the sodium using a carbon, carbon traps uh, by absorption. So it's a very efficient process that was developed a long time ago. It was used in uh, several countries like uh, in USA, in EBR2, and so on. We used also for Absodi. We will use again for Phoenix. So it works. Uh, it works very well for cesium. For uh, activated corrosion products, it's possible also to eliminate that. But honestly, the amount is very limited, and uh, most of the it is trapped in the, on the structures. And after that, by cleaning, we have a residual amount of uh, in the in the liquid effluent waste. We uh, we have this. Uh, this uh, content, but we are able to reduce the contamination in the liquid effluent. And so at the end, we produce uh, sodium hydroxide. It is uh, neutralized into uh, uh, water with a salt, okay, and uh, released. 
So it's a strategy. There are different strategies also. Uh, we have a possibility also to, to reuse this uh, sodium hydroxide. It was investigated, it was possible uh, to use this uh, sodium hydroxide in the reprocessing plant. You know that in the reprocessing plant, they use a lot of acidic bath and they need uh, sodium hydroxide. So we have seen that it was possible to do that, but for political reasons, it was not bold to transport, uh, for, uh, to transport this uh, uh, hydroxide to uh, La Hague reprocessing plant. And the uh, last option also is to produce concrete, okay? So it's a very, very low uh, uh, concrete, uh, activity concrete, um, yes, but uh, there are many options, yeah. Thank you. Back. So the next next lecture.